Last week, we discussed Elon Musk's efforts to advance his space program uh, and human civilization itself in the face of arbitrary and increasingly cumbersome and pointless interference by various government bureaucracies on the local, state, and federal level. And some of the sabotage is, of course, motivated by the regime's hatred for Elon Musk personally. But much of it, a sizable chunk anyway, is the natural byproduct of a bloated bureaucratic state that exists to make everything more difficult and more expensive and more complicated than it has any reason to be. At the Trump rally over the weekend, he told a story related to this subject. Uh, he's certainly not the only person to have experienced the unique horrors of government overregulation and inefficiency, but he's probably experienced more of it than most people ever will. And to that end, he related this anecdote. Uh, listen. SpaceX had to do the study to see if, if uh, Starship would, would hit a shark. And I'm like, it's a big ocean, you know. Uh, there's a lot of sharks. It's not impossible, but it's very unlikely. And uh, and I said, well, you have to, you know, this is, I think, from, from National Marine Fisheries, one of the, you know, NIMF, it's called. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, they were like, well, you have to do the study on whether you're going to hit a shark. We're like, what? Um, and, and then like, then I, we said, okay, well, fine, we'll, we'll, we'll do the analysis. And then, well, can you give us the shark uh, data? They're like, no, we can't give you the shark data. Well, like, Okay, well, then we're in a bit of a quandary. How, how do we solve this difficult, this, this shock probability issue? Uh, and and that's, they said, well, um, well, we could give it to our Western division, but we don't trust them. And I'm like, am I in a comedy sketch here? Um, and they're like, like, they're worried about the shock density data, like the people who hunt sharks for shark fins somehow getting their hands on this shock dense, the shock data. And, and so eventually, I think we, 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 we got the data and, and we could you know, run the analysis to say like, yeah, the sharks are gonna be fine. Um, but, but they wouldn't let us proceed with launch until we did this crazy shark data. And, and, they, and then we thought, okay, well, now we're done. And they said, but what about whales? I'm like, <laughs> when you look at a picture of the Pacific, what percentage of the surface area of the Pacific do you see as whale? Because <laughs> I see, look at a picture, I don't see any, it's like, you can't, where's a whale? And, and, and honestly, if, if the ship did hit a whale, it's like, honestly, that whale had it coming, because it's like, the odds are, <laughs> So low, you know, it, 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 it's, it, it's like, like Final Destination, the whale edition. It's like fate had it in for that whale, you know. Um, and so we have to do the whale analysis. And it's like, okay, yeah, the whales will be fine too, you know. So the government was worried that SpaceX might hit a whale or a shark when it lands its rockets in the ocean. Uh, just to put that into perspective, the Pacific Ocean is... 60 million square miles, which works out to about 40 billion acres, which works out to about 50 billion football fields. So now we have to ask ourselves, at any given moment, how much of that space is occupied at or near the surface by sharks and whales? And let's, let's allow for a psychotically high estimate. Let's just say that there are right now, at this moment, a billion football fields worth of sharks and whales swimming near the surface of the Pacific Ocean. Imagine an NFL football field crammed with sharks and whales, and now imagine a billion more of those. Well, even in this fantasy land scenario, that still leaves 49 billion football fields for Elon to land his rockets. The chance of hitting one of those poor creatures would still be microscopically small, and yet they still had to waste time and money dealing with this fantastically implausible hypothetical scenario. Why is that? Well, because the government hates Elon Musk, yes, for political reasons. But even more than that, the government is comprised of utterly useless bureaucrats who have no skills and nothing to contribute and no reason to exist. All of these pay people are paid for no reason to do nothing. And, and so most of the waste and inefficiency in government happens simply because these people have to justify their own existence. And this is, you know, every organization deals with this kind of thing to some extent. The bigger the organization is, the more of it you get. That's why, you know, as a general rule, uh, and this is just science, at least 30% of the people involved in any meeting that you ever go to at your job at least 30% of those people could be fired or at least given something more productive to do. 
Every meeting is 90% longer than it needs to be and involves at least 30% more people than need to be involved. Again, that's just basic science. Now, when it comes to the government, that 30% figure is more like 95%, which is probably still a conservative estimate. And a few days ago, uh, as if to prove the point, the uh, U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency put out a tweet ostensibly to brag about their involvement in hurricane cleanup efforts. But instead, they accidentally provided us with maybe the most powerful illustration of government inefficiency that we've seen in a very long time. The tweet says, along with our partners at FEMA, we will continue with disaster recovery as a result of Hurricane Milton. The safety of the American people is our top priority. Uh, now, accompanying that caption is this video. Watch. Okay, so for those listening to the audio podcast, uh, I will describe what we just witnessed. What we saw was, I guess, supposed to be the inspiring spectacle of 13 CBP agents standing in a line, passing a 10-pound log down the line to then throw it on a pile of larger logs, a larger pile of logs about 20 feet away. So just to review the numbers again, that's 13 government workers transporting one 10-pound log, 20 feet. Actually, it's 14 workers if you count the guy that's just standing there and watching. I assume he's the, he's the spotter tasked with observing and tending to any injuries that might be incurred during the procedure. Because you never know when somebody might get a splinter or crack a nail or something. Uh, it is, as I said, the ultimate illustration of government inefficiency. It, it's, it's pretty extraordinary. Now, but then again, it's easy to... Monday morning quarterback this thing. Can I think of a more efficient way to move a small log from one place to another place 20 feet away? Well, yes, I can. In fact, you could stick with the assembly line technique and just cut half the people and it would already be twice as efficient. If every CBP agent was simply required to extend their arms all the way while passing the log, it would mean that at least six or seven of them wouldn't need to be there. So they could go and form a different log train somewhere else, and now you've increased efficiency while also increasing the amount of work being done. But here I'm still operating within the sort of log train paradigm. It is possible to come up with log transportation methods that are entirely different. For instance, what if each of the 13 agents were to each grab their own 10-pound log and walk it the full 20 feet themselves? Now you'll have transported 13 times the number of logs in the same amount of time or even less time. Now, it's true that this requires a, a, a greater expenditure of effort and energy, but the workload would still be light enough that you should still be able to get the job done much quicker. I mean, are they in good enough shape to walk back and forth carrying small logs for even half an hour? If so, imagine how many logs 13 people could transport in half an hour. What if they could do an hour of work? Just imagine that. Now, of course, I'm, I'm brainstorming right now under the assumption that the federal government with its multi-trillion dollar budget can't spring for a few wheelbarrows. Like if it were possible to utilize that sort of technology, then even just one person could transport 10 logs in the time that it takes the log train to move one. And if you could use some kind of motorized piece of equipment, say like a tractor or something, you could increase the volume exponentially beyond that. But I know it's probably a bit unreasonable to expect that kind of a splurging from a miserly, stingy government that only spent $6 trillion last year. So forget the dreams of heavy machinery. Still, you, you, you get pretty nice quality wheelbarrow from Lowe's for like 60 bucks. Is that too much to ask? Apparently so. But this is what you get from the government. Everything will be done as inefficiently and uh, and as 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 uh, such a, as, as cumbersome a fashion as humanly possible, and we'll be made to pay for all of it. And that is why, 
The U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency is today canceled. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like access to my full show with no ads, you should go to dailywire.com and use promo code Walsh to get two months free on all annual plans. See you there.